What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to working on my Fox Body Mustang. So in today's video, I have subframe connectors to install. This has been a long time coming. I needed to get this done. There's it's just making too much power. So um, I have the Maximum Motorsports XL full length sub subframe connectors, and that's what we're going to be installing. So I'm going to show step by step of what you need to do to put these things on. So the first thing is you gotta get them out of the box. All right, and so the first thing you gotta do when you're installing these subframe connectors is you gotta test fit them because if they don't fit quite right, you have to bend them a little bit. So here is one of the Maximum Motorsports subframe connectors. I got the raw one. And just one thing before we get started, these connectors are side specific. So this nub on this side goes onto the outside of the vehicle or the outside of the subframe. So this would be the passenger side and then the other side, this tab will be on this side to be on the outside of the driver's side. So these are side specific, make sure you keep that in mind and everything else is the same. And so here are the two seat braces and they are side specific. So this side is your passenger side and this side is your driver's side. And Maximum Motorsports sends you a little diagram so you can tell and it you can see which one is the correct one. And you'll know too because when you put it up on the car it won't line up or it won't fit quite right so you'll be able to tell which is which. First thing you gotta do is you have to jack up the car. Mine's already up on jacks but you cannot jack this thing up on the subframe or the frame rails because it you won't be able to get the subframe connector on for one and then it won't set right. So on the rear, you have to have the car jacked up by the rear tires or on the axle housing, but not on the torque boxes or the subframe. On the front, you have to have it jacked up on the K member or the tires like a roll on lift or something like that. So you can see right here, there's my oil pan. We're looking at the engine to the front of the car and my jack stands are underneath the K member. And so the rear is jacked up on the tires, as you can see. And then I have two extra jack stands to put my subframe connectors on. And so the last thing you wanna do before you put install your subframe connectors is make sure your doors close right. Because if your doors don't close right and you put subframe connectors on, you're gonna stiffen up the chassis so much and then you're not gonna be able to get your doors right. So now we are on the driver's side and we're going to mock up this subframe and you can see I've already kind of started and I'll show it on the other side as well but so what you do is I'm using a jack stand and I use the jack stand and crank up on this thing so it can stay in place as well as an extra jack now you don't want to push up too much on this thing because you'll end up bending it and that's not what we want to do but you do want it to set in place so you can mock this thing up and what Maximum Motorsports says they want you to line this right up with the front of the subframe. So you can see it comes down, so this needs to line up with that. And so a good way to check and make sure that you got this thing lined up perfectly is to take a hand level and see, I got, I got those first try and I got it up pretty good. So once you have that side lined up, you wanna make sure that this gap right here, there's a gap. You wanna make sure it's under an eighth of an inch because you don't want to fill that up with weld, you want to have a nice clean weld right there. So you got to make sure that's under an eighth of an inch. And if it's not, if it's bigger than an eighth of an inch on that gap in the front subframe, you have to physically bend the subframe right there. You would have to bend the subframe right here where these tabs are, because you can see they have it bent here already. And so what you do is you take a hydraulic press, press down on here, and it would make that end come up and it would fix the gap. But once you have it all done, what you're gonna do is make a line around this guy, this tab, know where you're going to grind. So the other thing you wanna do is make a line at the front so you know where to line it up again. Just like that. And then on the other side, you are going to want to make another line so you can grind over there because you will be welding on the inboard side. All right, so now we're at the inboard side of the front of the subframe connector. So what you gotta do is make another line about six inches back and that's where you're gonna grind. So I missed it, I didn't grind down in there, I only grinded up top. So I gotta come back in here and grind this so I can have a nice pretty spot to weld. All right, so now we're at the rear subframe and we're on the inside of the subframe. So what you do is, according to Maximum Motorsports, is you line up this edge with and make it flush with that edge of the subframe. And you can just take a level 
and go like that and then you can see if you're flush or not and I am so it's good to go so then you just do the same exact thing and mark it Wow I don't want to talk and that's where you're gonna grind and you do it on the inside edge of the torque box too and you make mark as well as this subframe right here this is the rear so you gotta make a weld here so we gotta make sure we have a good mark that we can grind because we're gonna be grinding here okay and so the last spot you're gonna have to grind down so you can weld to it is the center section with the tab sticking out of it so this will be on the outside edge and the inside edge but once you have it lined up in the front is lined up and the rear is lined up all you do is you make a mark around it now we're looking at the inside of the subframe and all you do is make a mark here same thing okay so the passenger side is basically the same thing I just showed you but you're gonna have to disconnect your fuel lines and not disconnect them but there's clips there's clips retaining these things so you'll have to pop the clips out and then move them away from the subframe so you can mock it up and you can grind on it. So I'm gonna pop mine off real quick and then test fit this driver's side. All right, so now that we got all our spark, I can't say it, okay? So now that we got all our spots marked up, we can start grinding and make these spots really nice. Okay, and so this is what I'm going to be using to sand everything down with is an air sander with a flap disc with 36 grit. It's been working good, and I'm just going to keep on with it. So let's grind those spots down. Okay, once you got the subframe all cleaned up, all grinded down, and it's all bare metal for you to weld to, the spots that we marked anyway, now it's time to paint the subframe connectors with weldable primer, if you got the raw one. If you got the powder coated one, it's different, but if you have raw ones like I do, what you have to do is get weldable primer first. And there's a bunch of different kinds, it's kind of expensive too, and the one I'm using is U-Pole, the copper one. Maximum Motorsports does recommend the high zinc one, but I read a lot of good reviews on this particular brand and this particular weld through primer. So that's what I'm going to be using. And so what this is, is it is weldable, obviously through the name, but what you do is you spray it on the subframe connector where you're not going to be able to paint. So for me and everybody doing this is just going to be the back of the subframe connector. And then the two seat brackets too, you got to uh, paint the top of those. So, cause you're not going to be able to get to it after they're installed. Those are the couple things we got to paint with the weldable primer. And then to paint the rest of the subframe connector, I will be just using a normal paint, but for the parts that do need to be welded, I'm gonna use this stuff. And the couple spots on the chassis that we ground down, I'm gonna spray some of this stuff on there too. So let's paint the back of the subframe connectors. <laughs> so, but before we prime it, one of the things we wanna do is hit it with some acetone and get all the crap off of it, all the, any kind of coating, anything. We just wanna get it off with acetone, make sure it's nice and clean, because this stuff doesn't really, it doesn't adhere as well as normal paint. So that's one of the things we gotta do. So I'm gonna hit it with this real quick and then we'll paint them. So this is the finished product of the painted subframe connectors. I only painted the top, like I was saying, and parts that I can't get to after I've welded it. So just the top, you can see, and nothing on this side, because I'm gonna paint it with normal epoxy paint, as well as these, I won't be able to, and then also in here, where I'm going to be welding to. And then I did put it on the chassis of the bare metal, because once that metal is covered up, I won't be able to get to it ever again, and then there won't be any paint, just be bare metal, so that's where I put the weldable primer, and I'll show you. So you can see, I put the weldable primer on all of the spots that were um, raw metal. And I didn't put a lot, I just don't want it to rust, and I can't get to it afterwards, so I 
yeah, I just don't want it to rust. So I didn't put a whole lot. Okay, so now that that's done, it's time to install the seat braces. And it's just two bolts, it's super easy. Okay, so I don't know what happened to this part of the video, but what you want to do is there's two little bolt covers on the seat that are held in by two Phillips head screws. So you want to take those out and then you can get to the 15 millimeter nuts that hold the seat down. All right, so just pop these off. So what I did is, so I got this one loose, So, but we're gonna take this side off. And it doesn't matter which way you do it, but we gotta get the studs out because Maximum Motorsports gives us bolts to put in here. So what I did is I get it down to finger tight. And then I put this one upside down. I uh, get my two 15 millimeter wrenches and put one at the bottom, one at the top, and crank it down pretty tight. All right, and then on the bottom one, I loosen it up, and it usually can just pop that stud right out, just like that. And voila, the stud is out, and then you just to break them apart. I mean, you don't get it too tight, you get it tight, but enough so you can break it apart once you get it off. And so then you just repeat that step for the other side. All right, and so now we have Maximum Motorsports hardware. So you're gonna want a bolt and a washer and a bolt and a washer. So you just put the washer in and then thread it through the hole. And then once you get it threaded through, you torque it down and then we will move to the bottom side so we can put those um, seat braces on. And the size for the Maximum Motorsports is a 17 millimeter socket. Okay, and so now we have the two bolts coming down from the floor pan, our seat bolts, and we have our um, seat brace. And so the Maximum Motorsports faces towards the back and make sure you have the right side. This is the driver's side one and it has the little holes. The passenger side has the bigger holes, but the Maximum Motorsports symbol faces the back. So we're gonna get this on here, and we're going to put the washer, and then the nylock nut that Maximum Motorsports gives us. And we're not gonna get it on too tight, just snug. We wanna be able to move this thing around. So you want it just like this, not all the way Loose, not tight, but just so you can slide this thing around. Okay, and so before we start welding, the last thing I gotta do is unhook the ECU and unhook the battery. Because when you're welding on the car, the Pimp XS or the ECU that I'm using says to make sure that the ECU is disconnected because the weld could just short it out and bust it. So we're going to disconnect the battery and disconnect the ECU real fast. All right, so it is finally time to weld and I look like a dork, but safety first, right? Make sure you are safe before you weld on the car. So the battery is unhooked, the ECU is disconnected. I feel safe welding on the car now. So I got the driver's side subframe connector put up where it's gonna go. Okay, so you can see that this is where it's supposed to be. All the gaps are where I want them to be. And I tightened that down. So now everything is ready to go. So all we gotta do is weld it and for there so that where that clamp is maximum motor support says to clamp it down so you can get a good weld on it and it is as tight as it possibly can so I have that good right there so all we got to do is weld it and I'm gonna set you guys back and I'm gonna tack weld it where they say and then we'll go from there so it says to tack weld these four posts first and then tack weld the front on both sides and then tack weld the rear and then just weld it. All right, so here are the instructions just to make it a little bit easier. I didn't do a very good job explaining it while I was actually welding on the car. I was thinking way too hard about it. So, but the first thing you wanna start with is by tack welding the four legs of the seat brace to the subframe connector. And then we're gonna move to the front and tack weld that tab to the chassis and make sure there's no gap in the rear. But then we're gonna tack weld the inboard side of the front subframe connector to the chassis. And after that, we're gonna move to the rear and tack weld the inboard side of the rear subframe connector. And then we're gonna move to the outside. And we're just gonna weld the outside subframe connector just like it shows in the picture. And then we're gonna weld the inboard side. 
So then we're going to move back to the front and weld that tab all the way. Make sure you fill that little hole up with weld and then move to the inboard side and weld that thing all the way. Then clamp down that middle section and weld that thing. Make sure there's not that much gap and you get a good, nice, fat weld. And then finish the seat braces. Alright, so I got the driver's side all welded up, it is in place and it is good to go. Forewarning, my welds are ugly and just learn how to weld, So, but I did get them up. So I will need to wire wheel these things, but they are all welded up and ready to go. And yeah, that is one side done and I just got to weld that little plate in and we'll be good to go. So. Time to do the other side. I did it! Okay, now don't make fun of my welds too much. They're, you know what? I don't know enough about welding to say too much about it. So I had my settings too high at first and that's why it looks ugly. So whatever. So the one thing I did forget to mention on the driver's side with your fuel lines, you wanna get some kind of sheet metal, leather, a weld, uh, or a, a protective blanket, a weld protective blanket, that's what I got. So I got the protective blanket and that's what I put over the fuel lines to protect myself from blowing up. So let's look at the welds and I'll show you how they came out. All right, so there is that clip. And then here are these connectors. I gotta run them off first. You can see how ugly some of them came, but I'll just get better, no worries. So I got the weld on that side and then I got the weld back there. As you can see, nice and welded up. I got weld on both of the seat braces, a weld back there, and then I got the weld here and the weld there. And that was one of the best ones I laid, even though there's a couple ugly spots. All right, and so that is how you weld your subframe connectors. If you are not familiar with welding like me, you can do it. <laughs> I, I am, have no, that was my first time welding actually. Well, I, I practiced on a piece of metal one time and then I welded this and I figured because no one's gonna see it, you wouldn't know, as long as I made sure there were big fat blobs of weld on there, it was good. So, if you're a novice like me, you can do this. It's not so hard, you'll get used to it, and make sure to watch some how to weld videos before you start this. Okay, and so, before we call it done, after your subframes are on and connected, so these two plates that Maximum Motorsports gives you, so the dimples on the backside of the subframe connector that we were we had to bend to make sure the car was gonna set right, or it was, form to the car. Those dimples, we need to weld this over it so it doesn't flex anymore. We're done, no more flexing, this is it. So we're gonna weld these things onto the dimple and I have sprayed my weld through primer on it, on these pieces on the back side of them. So I'm gonna put this up towards subframe connector and then on the dimple. So you can see those dimples, I got it painted already. So all we're gonna do is weld that on there like that. So I'll get that done and I'll show you what it looks like. And so this is the finished product of welding these little um, support plates on that bend I was talking about. So, I mean, it's a fat weld, but at least it's solid and it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, so now that these subframe connectors are all welded up, it's time to paint them because we don't want to get all this rust and corrosion. We just want them to stay good for the rest of their life. So I'm going to clean up the welds with a wire wheel and then I'm going to wipe it all down with acetone and then we're going to spray it with this roll bar and chassis um, VHT paint for the underside and hopefully it holds up for a long time. It says you don't need primer. So we're going to give this a shot and see how long it lasts, but it will seal that metal and it won't rust. And that's the big part. So now that everything's prepped. All the welds are wire wheeled. Everything has been wiped off with acetone. I ground down a couple welds because they were too ugly for me to handle. So here's one of my blob welds and you can see it's all cleaned up and it's ready for paint. And now it's time to paint. So let's get her done. We are done. This is the final product. This is, I got a little crazy with the paint. I started painting the a hole underside of the car. You know, whatever. If I do say so myself, came out pretty decent. Um, yours should look like this too. So there it is, all painted black and ready to go. So that is subframe connectors. So this is the driver's side. Here is 
passenger side. And so, before we're done, we gotta make sure we hang up all our fuel lines back. Okay, so this is the subframe connector install. I hope this helped you. If you're trying to do it at home, you can do it. It's not too hard, you just gotta take the leap. So, <laughs> it was the welding was a little tough, but if you're diligent, you can get through it. So, I hope you found value. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment. And thanks for watching this video. I will catch you guys on the next one.